I'm Kareem Abulnaga, the founder of Practice Makes Perfect. I wake up every day at 4.30. I work out, shower, meditate, and get dressed. Sometimes my meditation is just a quick minute to remind me to keep working hard and always be grateful. I don't usually wear a suit to work, but this is the time of year when most charities have their annual benefit dinners. I plug in my headphones and start listening to my audiobooks. I listen at three times the normal speed and get through a little more than a book per week. Off to work. I mostly commute by train, so I use an app to minimize my wait time on the platform to ensure I don't miss a train by a few seconds. I'm in the office by 7 a.m. I try to get four to five miles of walking done in the morning before I head back to my desk, change out my sneakers, and lace up my shoes to start the day. First meetings at 9.45 to organize an end of summer celebration for our team and school partners. I then have an impromptu call with our contract consultant to update him on the details of the event. I'm working on self-publishing three books in the spring. I had given myself an hour to write. Now I'm left with just 15 minutes. Every minute counts. Today we have our monthly KPI meeting. I try to start all of my internal group meetings with three deep breaths. It helps me get centered and bring my attention to the meeting. Then I'm off to grab a quick bite. My next meeting's in Midtown, so I get on the train and listen to music. I'm meeting with an art institution to see if there's a potential partnership. Back to the office. I have informal check-ins with my staff to discuss challenges and opportunities, both personal and professional. I'm done by 5.45 and headed to the gala. I keep my girlfriend posted on my ETA. Tonight we're supporting an education charity for children of lesser means in South Africa. I'm out by 9 and in bed by 10.30. I'm waking up early to do it all again tomorrow, but I don't mind. I've dedicated my life to leveling the educational playing field for children growing up just like I did. I'm Rani Shabing, the founder and CEO of Her Agenda. As soon as I wake up, my mind is focused on what needs to get done for the day, and I always take a moment to note what I am grateful for. I'm not a big breakfast person, but I try to put something in my stomach. Then I take Chloe on a walk. I leave my phone behind. This is our time. I make it a point not to check emails until I get on my commute. Instead, I check my Trello app and focus on what my priorities are for the day. I like to be proactive rather than reactive. I'm not a morning person and I usually have long days. So in order to get the most sleep, I pre-schedule all my emails the night before to send in the morning. Once I get into the office, my priority is content. Her Agenda publishes multiple pieces of content per day. My team handles a lot of it, but I like to put my touches on the major features. I intentionally schedule meetings and events back to back on certain days and on other days I don't schedule anything so I can focus on doing the work. Today is a big media day so my makeup artist comes into the office to make sure I'm camera ready all day. Then I meet with my newswriter to go over our latest numbers and new content ideas. After that, I have a call with a major brand interested in having me appear in a campaign. I like to walk around my office while on a call which helps me to stay focused. My next meeting is with the founder of Black Girl Digital. We meet to go over the final edits of the Her Agenda 2018 media kit. After that, I circle back with my managing editor to get on the same page about our content calendar and upcoming Power Agenda features. Next, I jump in a cab and head up to LinkedIn for a video shoot. It's 6 p.m. and the date isn't done. I co-produce a panel to talk about what it means to be a Black-owned independent media company in 2017. The room is packed and I'm in awe of what my friends and co-panelists shared. After a busy day, I relax in a cab heading back to Brooklyn. Days like this inspire me to keep working to empower women and break down the barrier for the next generation of leaders. I'm Daniel Fine. I'm the founder and CEO of New. Every day, I wake up at 6.42 a.m., or at least attempt to. I immediately make my bed and do a quick 21 push-ups. Then it's time for a real sweat. For me, morning workouts are mandatory. They keep me happy and let me focus. Post-workout, I throw together the most important meal of the day, lox and eggs plus some berries. Then it's a quick, ice-cold shower, change, and prep for the day. I get my daily to-do list done at home and set my plan. I've been doing it this way for years, and my notebooks show it. I then hop a bike and head to work. The bike ride serves for phone calls, too. My parents and brother are almost always the first calls of the day. My mornings are for personal and internal teamwork. Today's priorities are one celebrity brand and distribution for our collegiate brands. I wrap that up and it's time for external meetings. I head downtown to meet an advisor and prospective partner for lunch. Then I hustle to meet an investor. No cameras allowed. 
Then it's time to meet the lawyers. With the licensing work we've been doing and some acquisitions in process, that office has become a second home. I head back to the office to check in with the team, shoot out some emails, and tie up loose ends. To blow off some steam at the end of the day and get an extra energy boost, I try to run home, freshen up, then go to meet with some of our exec team to check in outside of the office. After that, some friends come over for dinner. We pop some wine, catch up, and chill. Finally, between 12 and 1 I crash, then it's time to do it all over again. I'm Kim Kalp and I'm the co-founder at ZinePack. My alarm goes off around 7, 7.30 and the only thing that guarantees that I don't hit the snooze button is if I signed up for a class. Shadow box is in the regular rotation because I can think of nothing better for handling lingering frustrations than by hitting something. After 45 minutes of solid uppercuts, jabs, and Drake music on loud, I'm ready to get the day started. Lucky for me, I can walk to work. I'd say about 40% of my day is spent at my desk, taking calls, catching up on emails, while the other 60% is up and about at meetings, lunches, or dinners. I love to take meetings where I can sit outside. As a native of Florida, I miss the outdoors, so if I can get in a little vitamin D during a meeting going over facts and figures, I am all for it. At ZinePack, we create tactile products, so our team is always sending out samples to clients and making sure we're exceeding expectations. I work with the most kick-ass women on the planet who I can safely say help me become a better leader every day. Depositing checks for that work is also one of the best parts of any entrepreneur's day. In between meetings, I'll update my Instagram stories. It's become my newest guilty pleasure. I try to squeeze in time with fellow female founders at least once a month. Happy hours, dinners, whatever will work with everyone's schedule. It's helpful to have a community of strong women around you who are going through the same ups and downs of entrepreneurship. From day to night, I often don't have time to go home, so I can be seen pulling off Clark Kent-style wardrobe changes in the middle of the streets going from one event to the next. I do attempt to work-life balance by having a personal life and attempting to keep it personal. Whether it's dinners, events, or show, I still try to make it in bed by midnight to give myself a solid eight hours of sleep. I need the beauty rest to do it all again tomorrow. I'm Liz Wessel, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Weya. Every morning, I wake up to my dog Trooper around 7 a.m. Waking up to Trooper is like my morning therapy. Between rubbing her belly and feeding her, she gives me the perfect boost to start my day. I then check my calendar and respond to any quick emails that warrant a time-sensitive response. I always start with an 8 a.m. breakfast with either a candidate I'm interviewing, an employee at Way Up, or in this case, an investor of mine. After that, I sit at my desk to respond to some emails, then I start my meeting. As we start to scale our sales efforts, I speak pretty often with my CFO and CRO to map out strategy and help wherever possible. I then meet with another company to discuss a partnership. She's an HR tech CEO who's working with me to figure out how we can help both of our users get access to more jobs. Now I'm off to meet with the CEO of a Fortune 100 company whom we're trying to close a deal with. We love the platform and I'm feeling really good about the meeting. After that, it's back to my office. In order to not waste a minute, I book phone calls to overlap with my transit from one place to another. While in my get car, I take my weekly phone call with my executive recruiter. The call ends early, which means I get to call my parents, something I do at least once a day. Next up, it's more internal back-to-back -back meetings. Today, I'm speaking with our product manager and designer about roadmap prioritization. Wrapping up my afternoon in the office, I head to my monthly CEO meetup called Venwise, where a group of us CEOs meet to help one another with business opportunities, challenges, and best practices. I love the network of founders in New York, which always feels like it's full of people who just want to help one another. Finally, I head back uptown to meet JJ, my co-founder. We're both night owls, so we often sync up around 9 p.m. to catch each other up on our days. Then I finally get home where I finish up my work, play with Trooper more, and then fall asleep by 3 a.m. to an episode of Seinfeld. And then it's time to start another day fresh and ready to help more people get hired. I'm Morgan Curtis, the founder and designer of Morgan Lane. As soon as I wake up, my mind is on my company. I dream of it and get my best ideas while I'm sleeping. They do a lot of business overseas, so the first thing I have to do is check my phone for important emails. I'm terrible at getting out of bed, so my fiance lures me with the sound of our record player. The song sets the tone for my day. We make our cappuccinos and drink them together. I wait to check my laptop till after he leaves. If a potential meeting comes up, I try to schedule it in my neighborhood before heading to work. 
Today I'm visiting the factory to check on things. I like seeing my garments being cut on the machines and putting on the final touches. Then I take the subway to work. I usually read the skim on the way. With an e-commerce business, it's important to offer something that sets you apart from the retail stores. One is personalization. Another is the packaging, which I personally illustrate. I even enjoy shipping some of the orders myself. This afternoon, I'm meeting with a prospective intern. I like to be involved in all aspects of Morgan Lane and enjoy seeing how the future thinks. It's probably my most rewarding moment when a model comes and tries on a new style that has just been finished. Working in the garment district, it's easy to shop for trims and materials nearby. Sketching, coloring designs, and finding new fabrics. I really enjoy working on the process. My creative agency is close by and I'm always inspired when I visit them. Today we're talking about potential designs for a pop-up in London. It's encouraging to meet with collaborators in their environment. My favorite days end with a run on the Williamsburg Bridge with my fiance. I leave my phone at home and enjoy this time together. I love the energy and lights of New York City. I can't wait to see what tomorrow will bring. My name is Vanessa Stoffenmacher and I am the founder of Vrayanoro. My day starts at 6 a.m. First thing I do is check my phone, check my emails, make sure I don't have any immediate fires to put out. My morning is really about taking care of myself. Start by going for a run. Then it's dump in the shower, pick out an outfit for the day. My closet's all neutral, so it's pretty easy. Dry my hair, quick sea salt, then I make my green smoothie, and then of course my matcha. That's what gets me through my day. After that, I get Frank ready, get in the car, and it's a short drive over to the office. As soon as I sit down, it's emails, emails, emails. Can't get through the emails fast enough but then it's time to check on the team. So it's one-on-ones at each person's desk, and then a quick team meeting to make sure we're all on the same page. We're launching a new collection tomorrow, so it's a bit hectic. Back to more emails after that, then an improv design club meeting, then checking on packaging designs. I'm known for being obsessed with details, so clearly I have to check in on the packaging process. Off to lunch, another smoothie, and take Frank for a quick walk, and then back to work, more emails. Jumping on Uber. Off to the road to see our very first retail store. Gotta check on the quality quickly and then talk about an entirely new project that we're launching tomorrow. Quick walk back to the office. One of the perks of being in downtown LA is that I get to walk around the city all the time and still be productive. After work, jump in the car, blast my music. My car is my escape pod so I can really shut the world out and it's me time again. When I get home, my husband has dinner cooked for me. I know, I'm a lucky girl. After dinner, it's back to some more emails, quick check-in, and lights out. I'm Yuna Kim, and I'm the founder of Simple Habit. My day starts around 6.30, and I like to start my morning with a meditation to clear my mind. A couple times a week, I like to do some yoga in the morning. By 8, I'm out the door with a quick stop to the coffee shop. I spend morning on tasks that need the most focus, like reviewing our product roadmap, application for recruiting, or reviews from our users. The less time you spend in San Francisco lines, the better. I usually get lunch with our team, but today, I'm in a rush, so I'm going solo. My afternoons are spent on meetings. I make a habit of doing one-on-ones with my team members to see how they're doing and how I can be helpful. I'm meeting with our accountant and office manager to view our financial status. Once every few weeks, I meet with my executive coach. She helps by being my soundboard on problem solving and reflecting on my performance as a leader. I want to become a better leader that my team deserves. After six, I catch up on the day's emails and other things that need to be done. By eight, I call it a day at work and head home or go out for dinner. I also like to unwind by spending time with my dog or playing piano or cello. At 11, I'm in bed and ready for the next day. I'm Alexandra Satarain and I'm the co-founder of Eight. My husband and I co-founded the company, so our morning routine is spent together. 
Most mornings, I'm awake by 7. Mateo prepares a glass of water, lemon, and turmeric while I check our sleep stats in the 8 app. I don't drink coffee, so the espresso is for Mateo only. We exercise in the morning, which powers us through the day and improves our sleep quality. After that, we get ready and hop on our Vespa to commute to work. We gain 20 to 30 minutes from avoiding the subway. We use this time to grab breakfast together while catching up on the priorities of the marketing team. We are the first to arrive at the office, which gives us time to finish catching up and do individual work before the team arrives. My first meeting is at 9 a.m. We review the latest updates to our e-commerce site and the open items in our devlog. Then I head to Galvanize for my quarterly mentor hours. Today, I'm mentoring three entrepreneurs seeking advice on messaging and marketing channels. I use the 15-minute walk there to check on the status of our latest retail launch and squeeze in a brief call to my mom in Mexico. I then head back to the office and jump into another meeting with our growth lead. We review the KPIs for the week so far and agree on action items. Then it's time for a quick meeting with our affiliate manager to review our performance dashboard. I keep team meetings brief by focusing on what's working, what's not, and what's next. I grab a late lunch and spend an hour at my desk to catch up on emails and individual work, then end my day with a call to a potential retailer. When I get home, Mateo and I make dinner together. While cooking, we talk about the day, reconnecting on team performance and decisions I may need help with. Dinner is our favorite time to brainstorm before disconnecting for the rest of the evening. We're in bed by 10.30. Sleep is the means to an end for a productive life. I'm Brian Manning, co-founder of Two Blind Brothers. I turned a diagnosis of legal blindness into one of the fastest growing cause-driven companies in the country. I start every day at 6.30 with a hug from my fiance, Court. And then we spend 30 minutes just laughing and talking and setting daily goals. Then it's off for a run. It's where I get my most creative thinking done and it de-stresses me throughout the day. Whenever I have my headphones in, I am listening to an audiobook at two times speed. At 8.30, Court and I leave to go to work. We always stop at Dunkin' Donuts. When you're visually impaired, everyone is your best friend until you find out who they are. Never underestimate the power of small talk. It makes a big city feel like a small town. At 9.30, we have our team meeting. It's all about tweaking goals and updating on projects. Every week, we sit down and brainstorm new ideas for campaign and then immediately film. We try and get a new post up every three days. Lunchtime, and this is when I get through the majority of my emails. I use text-to-speech so I can listen at two or three hundred words a minute while I reply. It makes me more effective and frankly saves my vision for a little later in the day. This afternoon, Cord and I are spending a lot of time working on new product launches. It's a brand new fabrication that we've never used before, so it creates a few unique challenges, but more importantly, we want to make sure that the outfits are going to work together. Every day, I try and connect one person with a visual impairment because it can be profoundly lonely. So instead of talking about our eyesight, a fellow New Yorker and I spent 30 minutes complaining about the Mets. After work, we swing by the grocery store to pick up some ingredients. Court starts prepping and I start cooking. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. We never talk about work while cooking. It separates our personal and business lives. We do some wedding planning and then pack for a keynote Brad and I are giving on Wednesday in Austin. We play a hand or two of gin rummy and it's off to bed at 11 p.m. to have a little bit more fun tomorrow. My name is Daniela Moreira and I'm a chef and owner of Coyomar Deli and Timber Pizza in Washington, D.C. I usually wake up between 4 and 5 and use the time to do work before starting the day and wait for my fiancé and business partner Andrew to wake up. Once it's light out, we take our dog Frankie for a walk in our neighborhood. We live in the same neighborhood as our restaurants and sometimes we stop by Timber to say hi to the employees. I love the neighborhood because we gotten to know the famous that live there and it is its own community within a big city. Then I make breakfast and coffee with Andrew. We catch up about our businesses and things we're working on. We head to call your mother when it opens. I say what's up to the staff, check on production for the day, line set up, taste some bagels, and see the care is all good. Once the restaurant is off to the races, I can focus on recipe development. 
For Your Mother is all about good vibes and fun spins on things, so we like to create a menu with unexpected but delicious flavors. We're always trying to make things better, so today we're trying some new recipes. At 11, it's time to work off those cookies, so Andrew and I head to a personal training class at Sweat DC. We like to support the community, so we love that the gym is across the street from us and the owner is the man. Next, we hit up our favorite neighborhood, Vegan Spot. We use lunchtime to brainstorm the new catering menu. In the afternoon, I take Frankie to the park with my sister, who's visiting from Argentina. With my family so far away, it's great to have her here for a few months. We're opening a few new locations soon, so we stop by one in Georgetown to decide on some finishing touches. We're also helping open a new sort of South American restaurant called Mercy Me, so we see how construction is going and we sample the menu. Finally, we head back to Timber to say hi to the team and to make sure everything is Gucci. We pick up some pizzas and we head home to the compress. I like to be in there early because tomorrow is always crazier than today. I'm Kayla Giovanazzo and I'm the CEO of Eat Clean Bro. I usually wake up around 6.30 a.m. unless my son, Giorgio, decides to wake up earlier. I really cherish meals as a family, so I love starting out the morning having breakfast together. Especially at 37 weeks pregnant, I really need to be out the door by 8.30. I have limited time to get everything ready before this new baby comes. Today, Jamie's heading to the gym before work, so I'll see him at the office. When I get to the office, I like to get myself settled and start going through my tasks for the day, greet the staff, and then begin tackling my email inbox. Today, we have a really important tech meeting. You'd be surprised how much tech goes into running a successful food business. My door is always open to everyone. There's many questions and requests all day. Now it's lunchtime, and this is my favorite because we get to try out new menu items. At this time, we'll discuss our current meals, their sales, maybe possible new items, and then any issues that we currently have. After lunch, we have a phone call about exploring a new software to implement on our website that would help with sales tax and logistics as we expand into new states. Now I'll head into another meeting for about an hour of promo planning. Promotions are a big, big part of Eat Clean Bro, and this is such a fun meeting for us. It's really fun to have the whole staff in one room all weighing in and sharing their ideas. Before I leave the office, I always make sure to check out with all my staff and say goodbye. After work, I'll try to squeeze in a little bit of me time, so I'll head to the gym for about an hour or so. Being pregnant, it's really hard to force yourself to work out, but exercise is so good for you and your baby. Once I'm home and settled, I'll sometimes try to put my work phone away for the night. Family dinner is so important to us, so we like to make sure we sit down and we eat together. After dinner, it's time to give Giorgio a bath, and once bath time is complete, we get him right into bed. Once Giorgio is sleeping, I'm usually not far behind. I have to mentally prepare myself to get up and do this all again tomorrow. My name is Mickey Shiloh, and I'm the founder of Hard Drive, the world's first subscription-based record label. I'm an artist at the end of the day, so I'm not one of those entrepreneurs that gets up at 5 in the morning. Sometimes I don't even get to sleep until then. I normally wake up around 9 a.m., depending when I get to bed. First thing I do is roll over and check my texts. Then I hop up, head to the kitchen, pop a coffee pot into my Keurig, and get on my laptop. Time to go over today's schedule and check emails. I respond to any support messages from my artists and tend to any other client or business emails. Anything I don't want to deal with in the moment, I mark as unread. I try to get my workout in early. I've got a Peloton bike in my living room, so 20 to 30 minutes on there and I feel like I've done enough good for my body for the day. After my workout and shower, I hop back on the computer for any further admin work and handle any business calls. If I haven't eaten yet, I'll make a late breakfast. I own a multimedia space in North Hollywood. It's called Hard Drive Headquarters. If we had an event the previous night, I'll do a bit of cleaning up. Then it's back to the computer for whatever other work needs to get done. I'm either updating or building a new website, responding to event inquiries, coordinating services for my artists, researching new ways to optimize my business, or simply organizing my countless to-do lists. I'm also working on a book right now. I'll spend most of my afternoons working on that. In the evenings, I get into my music zone. I've always been super creative at night, so I'll either head home to record new songs at my home studio setup, or I'll go to a studio nearby with one of my producer friends. Lately, I've been working on an upcoming album with my producer, Rami. Nowadays, my sessions last for three hours. I used to go to two or three different studios a day back to back, but as I've gotten older, I've trimmed out all the wasted time and would rather just be in and out. 
After the studio, I head home to unwind with some Netflix, and sometimes I'll FaceTime friends or family to catch up. On a good night, I'm in bed by midnight. When I finally do get to bed, I reflect on what I got done that day and gear up for what I have to do the next. Excited to check off even more on my to-do list. My name is Manali Chitani, and I'm the co-founder of Wild One. At 6.30, I get out of bed. It's time to hit the bike for a ride with Allie Love. It's important for me to get moving in the morning. The Today Show is on in the background, a force of habit I picked up from my parents. I make a green shake for breakfast and take my foster dog for a walk. Fostering is such a joy. You get to give love to a dog who's had a rough go and to see their personality warm and open up. At 8 a.m., I'm out the door and in the car to work, pup in tow, as our office is very dog friendly. I use my time to clear my inbox from last night, review my calendar, and make the day's to-do list. At 8.30, I'm at my desk getting a head start before my team is in. Today, we're starting with an all hands. We gather the Wild One team in a meeting room to review high-level business updates. It's important to myself and my co-founders that everyone is in the loop. After, I meet one-on-one -on -one with team members on my marketing team to make sure they're on track for the week. My days tend to be meeting heavy, so for lunch, I typically order in and eat my salad mid-meeting. This afternoon, I'm on set art directing a shoot for our very first seasonal color. Dogs on set can be hectic, but this is also the most fun part of my work day. In the afternoon, I head out for coffee with my co-founder, Adam. He gets an espresso, I get a yuzu honey tea, and we chat about business updates and life outside of the office. My last meeting of the day is with our product development team. Today, we're talking about 2020 product launches. We're looking at new toy shapes and treat recipes. This is where the top secret stuff happens. My co-founders and I head out for a quick cocktail to wind down and catch up on life outside of work before I pop over to my favorite little grocery store in Soho to grab what I need for dinner. Cooking is how I unwind at the end of each day. My time in the kitchen feels the most creative and free. My boyfriend Matt and I prep in the kitchen while dancing around to Billy Joel. While I typically aim to be quick and efficient, I feel the opposite about dinner with friends. Tonight, some of our closest come over for a more interactive dinner and wine. The night winds down with end of day email checks and some self care. I'm in bed and out for the night by midnight, prepped and ready to go to do it again tomorrow. I'm JJ Johnson, chef founder of Ingrained Hospitality Concepts. I leave the house around 9 a.m. to ensure I get enough sleep to have a fresh start. I pop into my local bodega every morning. I bring my own plant-based protein powder and get a shake before my workout. I jump on the C train and head to Chinatown. This is when I catch up on emails and think about what I need to accomplish today. I head out to S10 Gym with Joe Holder, one of the toughest workouts, but I love it because Joe and I mentor each other through our next moves in life. He pushes me to my mental and physical limit. I call a lift and head over to my cookbook publisher at the Flatiron Building. We select the book cover and discuss how to maximize the book's global reach. When I'm done here, I have to run to check out a space for my new restaurant content. We then head to Hospitality House to talk next steps with my brand and hotel and museum spaces. From there, it's time to get back in the kitchen. I get on the D train to 125th Street and take my daily call from my business manager. I get in the kitchen with my second family as we taste dishes and figure out what's going on for the week. The key in the kitchen is staying tight with your team. When service is over, I walk over to my favorite bar, 67 Orange. I catch up with my close friends. We talk, laugh, and inspire each other to our next steps in life. Now it's time to get home to see the wife and walk the dog. I love my family time, but I'm never not hustling. I'm already thinking about what tomorrow will bring. While others are talking about it, I'm making it happen with my team. 